Take your hands down. Thank you. Okay, so uh, next up we have Julien, so round of applause for him. Thank you very much. Thank so good morning, uh, my name is Julian, uh, I'm a Go developer, uh, I work at Continuous. Continuous is a company behind an open source project uh, named uh, Traffic. And uh, Traffic is an open source reverse proxy uh, made to deploy microservices with ears. What does it mean? It means that Traffic doesn't need any configuration file. Traffic just uh, connect to your orchestrator API and then refresh its configuration dynamically by listening to your orchestrator event, by listening to your new, con or your new service. So uh, today for me, it makes sense to, to talk to you how to write a reverse proxy. When I start to work on a presentation, I usually search for the main word of my talk on Wikipedia because everybody knows that Wikipedia is the real truth. And so, if we search for reverse proxy on Wikipedia, we can uh, find something like this. A reverse proxy is a type of proxy server that will retrieve resources on behalf of a client from one or more servers. And then these resources are then returned to the client as if they originated from the web server itself. So if we highlight the main word of this definition, uh, we can say that a reverse proxy is a proxy server that will return resources from servers to client. So, in this live coding session, we will need a server, we will need a client, and we will call the proxy server that will return resources. So, the first thing, the server. I think that today, the simple way to have a server is just to launch a Docker container. So, uh, we will use a Docker container. I prepare a container to show you all the use cases. So, thank you. I will run this container. Okay. Thank you. Uh, and so next, we will need a client. Uh, for the client, I could have used a browser, but I think a browser is not enough to show you all the use case. So uh, I will use the curl command. So let's try to call this server with the curl command. So I will just use the curl command and say I want to call my server. No, HTTP. Oh. Oh, this is difficult. <laughs> okay, here I call my server. And then, um, the next step is to build a proxy server. So, for this, we will need an empty main function, and we will use the HTTP package, and the listen and serve function, and we will listen on the port 8080, and that's all. We have a server. I launch, and then let's try now on this server. Okay, we have a page not phone because we need to return resources. So let's try to return resources. We need the demo URL. We will use the IP of our container. Oh, sorry. <laughs> okay, and I will just handle the error. Okay, and I will use the HTTP util new single reverse proxy with this demo URL, and I will put this into my server. Let's try now. No, I need to restart. Okay, let's start, and it works. Thank you. Do you have any question? <laughs> Oh yes, I did not use the 25 minutes, sorry. We need to deep dive, but I think it's uh, interesting to know that this implementation exists. This implementation is maintained by the Go team. Uh, this is improved too. Uh, for example, in the um, next version, the 1.12, uh, they add the support of WebSocket. So with the 1.12 version, you can uh, proxify from WebSocket server, but we will need to deep dive. So, what we have is this. We have a client that just sends a request to our reverse proxy. What we, need, what we will need is to forward the request to our server. So let's do this. So we will remove uh, this thing. Okay, we will use a new handler. And we will just take the request, modify the host with our demo host. We will need to Modify the URL host to oh, with the demo 
you were asked to, we need to change the scheme to, okay, and we need to remove the request tree on the request because the request tree is filled by the server and a client will reject a request with a request tree. So we need to empty it. Okay. And now we will use the default HTTP client to just forward this request. Uh, I, I will under the error because we are in live coding session and if I have errors, I want to know what. Um, so, um, here we will just write an internal server error. Okay, and we will just write in the body the error. Okay, and we will return. Okay, I will just ignore this for the moment. I restored and then if I try to call my reverse proxy, you can see that my demo container receive a request, a request, okay? But I still have no content because I need to copy the response. So we will copy the response just by write the status code, so, okay, and then we will copy just the body of the response. We restart, and then, if we try now, we have our content. Okay, now let's try another pass. I have a demo that JSON, and you can see that this is, this is a JSON, but the content type is wrong, no? What about my demo server? Oh yeah, this is a good content type, so I missed something. In fact, we need to copy response header too. We only copy the status code and the body. So let's copy the response header too. So for this, we will just, before writing the status code, we will loop on the header of the response. The headers are map of string, so we need to have a double loop and we will just set, we will just set this on our response. Okay, let's restart and try again. Here I have my content type. Good. Next use case. X4 audit for. What is X4 audit for? Imagine if I take my client and I just call my demo server. The demo server would receive a request with a remote address uh, ended by three. This is my IP, this is a client IP. But if I use the reverse proxy, in fact, the reverse proxy will cause the demo server. So the reverse proxy will receive a remote address with a three, but the demo server will receive an address with a one. So I can't know what is the client IP. So for this, we need X4 audit for. Let's uh, see it in a real life. So I will try to run a curl in the container to have a new IP, and if I call directly my demo server, you can see that the remote address is with a three. Now, if I try to call my reverse proxy, you can see that this is a one. So I will set the X forward it for header. So the only thing we have to do for this is just on the request, we will set the header X forward it for with the remote address value. But in fact, the remote address is not enough because the remote address contains a port, so we need to split on the port and just keep the host. Okay, let's try again. Now, if I call my reverse proxy, I have a X forwarded for with the IP with a three. Okay, next use case. Stream, what is stream? Stream is when your server start to send the body, then flush, and then send more body. Let's see it in the real case. If I use curl to call 
my demo server. I can see that. I have the beginning of the body, then I wait, and I have the end. Okay? Let's try this on our reverse proxy now. Okay, we wait, we wait, and we have all. So, why? This is because we only flush at the end of the handler. So, to handle this, we will need to flush more. For this, what we can do is just start a new Go routine that will just loop, oof, loop with a ticker, for example, a ticker of something like 10 milliseconds. And I will just flush. I'm really sorry for your harm. <laughs> okay. Um, in order not to have uh, some go routine leak, I will just uh, use a new chain to stop this go routine when the body uh, finishes the copy. Okay. So just a case. A case with the done, and we will return the routine, and then we will just close this channel here. Okay, now let's try this. I will start, and I try again. Okay, now we have stream on our reverse proxy. Next use case, trailer. You know what is trailer? Trailer is like a but that will come in soon. So, as you may know, headers can be sent only before you write the status code. And if you want to send something after, you need to do this like this. So you start to announce trailer. You, you will say what you will feel next or during the body. And then you, you write your status code, you write your body, and you can start to set the trailer value. What happens in the raw body? In fact, the body will be in chunk, and the chunk is a chunk size, then a chunk, con a chunk content, then a chunk size, a chunk content, and if your chunk size is zero, this is a trailer. So this will be something like this. We have five bytes, the hello the content, then zero byte, and the X trailer value. Let's see it in a real case. So if I called my demo, you can see that I have the trailer here. I announce that I will have X trailer, and then I fill the X trailer with the X value. Let's try this on our reverse proxy. It doesn't work. Because we need to announce our trailer, and we need to send the trailer after the body was read. Because in the client port, we need to read the trailer before to read the body, you, we will only have the keys, and then we read the body, and we will have the value. So we will handle that in our reverse proxy. So, just before to write the header, we will just create a trailer key slice. Then we will loop on the trailer in the response, and here we'll we only have the key, in fact. So we will just append the key in the trailer key. And then we will announce the trailer by just write a header named trailer with the trailer key's value joined just by a comma. OK, let's try with this. Now, as you can see, we are not the trailer. We have the header trailer with X trailer, but we don't have any value. So we will need to fill the value. For this, we'll do something like for the header, but after reading the body, because we need to fill the trailer, and so we will loop on the trailer. Trailer is a map of slice of string two, so we need to use the value, a double loop on the values. OK, and we just set our value. And this will fill our trailer. Let's try with this. OK, the extra value is here. Next thing, HTTP2. So 
You're Go developer, you know that. HTTP2 needs HTTPS. No, it's wrong. In fact, HTTP2 need knowledge. What does it mean? It means that if you know that your server can do HTTP2, you can do HTTP2. For example, the gRPC server is just HTTP2 and the client is HTTP2. You don't need HTTPS. But if you don't know, the simple way to know this is to use TLS LPN. How it works? In fact, when you will do the TLS LPN, you will send the client hello with the protocol you support. The client will say, I can do HTTP1, I can do HTTP2, and then the server will just choose which protocol to, to use, and it will return this in the server hello, in the selected protocol. So if we want our reverse proxy to do some HTTP2, we need to be in HTTPS. Let's do this. We will just change our listen and serve to be a listen and serve TLS, and we will add set file and key file. Okay, and now if I restore it, my reverse proxy is in, H and in HTTPS. And I already know that my demo server just can do HTTPS, so I will just change the scheme here. Okay, so it could be enough. But the default client in Go doesn't say that it supports HTTP2. You need to configure the transport of your client to just say, I can do HTTP2. And in order to do this, you need to use the HTTP2 package and the configure transport function and just give your transport. So we will give the default transport as we use the default client. And we need to just type it. Okay, and with this, I will use HTTP2. Let's try this. If you can see here, this is HTTP2. Oh no, bad request, why? Hey, yes, I need to do HTTPS, you know. Okay, and now this is HTTP2. Um, do you know what, what use HTTP2 and trailer? Because maybe you, you think you never use trailer or you never use HTTP2, but gRPC use HTTP2 and trailer. So if you want a reverse proxy uh, that can do a gRPC, you need to implement HTTP2 and trailer. Okay. We, we could have uh, seen a lot of other things, uh, but the time uh, goes, and so um, now, this is a real end, and you can ask for questions. Thank you. Any questions, raise your hand, please. Yeah. I was wondering about the TLS version you talked about with four letters. Can you talk a bit more about it and explain it to A something? Uh, ALPN. What is ALPN? Uh, ELPN is really the uh, protocol negotiation. So this is really the part that uh, will uh, negotiate which protocol you will use after uh, the uh, end check, in fact. No. This was really clear. Okay, so if there's no more questions, round of applause for Julien.